No, this is not a weapon to fight dragons or to save the maiden in the high tower, guys. This is a damn tennis racket, you incels. Let's see what this new offering from Wilson can do on the tennis court. This racket is endorsed by Stefano Shitsipas. I, I mean, sorry, Stefano Shitsipas. And with true marketing fashion, to have you play like the Greek god himself, each racket you order from Wilson will now come with a package of laxatives, so you can have incredibly long bathroom breaks if you're losing a tennis match or down a few sets. In great detail, I will be going over this Wilson Blade V8 18 by 20 racket from Wilson. And just as a warning, you may not be able to get your hands on this racket for quite a while due to the global supply chain shortage of literally everything tennis related. So if you want to skip to a certain part of the review, I will leave timestamps down in the section below for you guys to check out. The 18 by 20 string pattern is a dying breed. Most tennis players require a more open string pattern for more spin potential grinding from the baseline nowadays. So when I saw that Wilson still made blades in this tighter string pattern, I was pretty excited. I do have a flirting history with the good old head UTEC IG Prestige Mid, which is 93 square inches and 18 by 20 string pattern. So I was especially eager to try this old school looking tennis racket out onto the tennis court. Speaking of head, I want to thank the YouTube members of this channel for their pulsating support for content like this. Without their support for this channel, this would not be possible due to the copious amounts of alcohol I need to get in front of a camera and entertain you guys and brutally bash tennis manufacturers. So if you guys want to buy an IPA for me or a rail shot gin, join this channel for only $2.99 a month to get exclusive access to live streams, emojis, and pre-access to tennis videos such as this one. I really love how Wilson has relatively stayed true to its performance racket origins. Think of the pro staff from about 10 years ago. This 98 square inch head size now comes in some sort of a weird looking green, almost purple holographic paint finish on the body. Yes, all the pics on the online retailers do show that it is green on its body, but seriously, it does look like it's purple sometimes in some lights if you angle it at a certain way. Two-handed backhanders will probably find this handle just a little bit shorter than normal, just like all the blades in the past. And the more oval looking shape of this head, plus the holographic like finish, sometimes makes it look like it's 110 square inches in your hands instead of the regular 98. Again, just cosmetic. Also, with a string pattern paired with a smaller head size like this, it makes a string bed tighter than a high school tennis player's line call. From the baseline, you can definitely tell that this tennis string is a closed pattern right from the get-go. There's no hiding it. I literally could not hit the ball long unless I completely opened the racket face on contact. I felt like I could swing as hard as I can. As long as I kept my composure during the contact point and followed through relatively well, the ball could not go past the baseline. That's not to say there, there wasn't any spin potential. The spin potential from this racket was absolutely fantastic. This racket has the most spin potential from any 18 by 20 string pattern I have ever played with except the previously mentioned Head Utech IG Prestige Mint. Yes, it did have more spin potential than any of the rackets from the Head Speed line I've tried as well, even though it is two inches smaller around the head. <laughs> That's what she said. However, this racket is not perfect from the baseline. The trajectory of this racket's string bed was atrocious. I felt like I was constantly fighting the racket in order to get ample height over the net. This is a unique situation because the racket didn't lack any spin, spin potential, or bite, but it sure as hell lacked trajectory and height from the baseline. One thing you'll notice too that this racket is extremely comfortable. Looking at the specs of this, you can definitely tell that this is a very low stiffness rating. I believe it's around 60 listed on retail websites. If you think about it, a 64 rating for stiffness is considered normal by today's standards. Given the flexibility, power was actually not surprisingly lacking either. It launched the ball with enough pop and speed from baseline to baseline. Just don't make that mistake from having a good launch angle from the string bed though. Yes, it's flexible. But if you are one of the many players out there that have tried the Wilson Clash and thought it was way too whippy and flexible and overpowering, fear not. This blade is not that flexible. By a long shot, 
This is the best tennis racket I have ever played with for slices, specifically the backhand slices. I cannot give this racket enough praise in that aspect. I seriously suggest you try and demo this blade just to see how much a directional control, spin, and buttery smooth cuts on the ball you can take with this bad boy. Although I am praising this with astronomically high regards, do not buy this racket until you have heard the end of this video. There is something you need to hear that's extremely important concerning the second most important shot in tennis with this racket. Although this is a fantastic, although not the best, racket to flatten out shots on, I would still argue that the Yonex V-Core 95 version 2021, I will leave a link to that tennis racket review in this corner if you guys haven't checked it out yet. That Yonex racket is still the best racket in the business for approach shots. But as of now, this blade is a damn close second. No, no, if it was a normal racket, that ball would have been two feet out. I didn't feel that. Consistent and lacking power are the two ideas that come to my head with this racket concerning volleys. Yes, this racket might be good for reaction volleys and more finesse shots like drop volleys, but I was disappointed with the racket because it gave me almost no power. Every single punch or stick volley I hit landed at least two feet shorter than expected. I swear I would be aiming my forehand or backhand volley to bounce in the middle of no man's land, but it ended up landing about six inches just past the service line. This always happened whether the ball was coming at me with a lot of pace or if the ball was just coming over the net with barely any pace because my opponent was wrong footed. The serves with this closed string pattern racket were pretty good. Yes, it was consistent like the volleys, but it actually did not lack any power. Similar to the flatter shots from the baseline, this racket was encouraging you to drop bombs as first serves, flat serves, without any sense of loss of control, loss of pace, or loss of depth. With welcome arms, the second serves, both kick and side spin, did have enough bite on it as well. And unlike the comments about the low launch angles from the baseline, the angle from the spin serves were perfectly fine. Yes, I wish there was a little bit more spin and bite to the spin serves, but for an 18 by 20 racket, it was manageable. This is the part of the video review where I will tear this racket absolutely apart. I am utterly lost on why Wilson would release a racket, a very popular racket line, that is utterly lacking in this department. But let's start off with the positives first when it comes to the serve returns for this racket. The block or punch returns, both forehand and backhand, were fine. It landed deep with enough control to get the point started. But <laughs> with that somewhat backhanded praise out of the way, the backhand returns were below average at best if you wanted to take a cut at the ball. The flexibility and unstableness of this racket from big shots were very, very apparent. 
there were times where Brian would hit huge bombs to my backhand, and I didn't feel comfortable following all the way through because I thought the racket was going to break. I think that this is attributed to both the lighter weight of this racket and the low stiffness rating. Blocking the ball back was average at best, as I said, but ripping a backhand return was damn near impossible, even if the serve was coming to you at a slightly slower speed. As for the forehand returns, this is the worst returning racket I have ever played with coming from the forehand side. I can count the number of times the ball went over the net in my play test with one hand. The launch angle was impossibly frustrating to get any type of height on the ball from the forehand wing. Not to mention, the instability of the racket, even during a clean contact shot, made me wonder if I was using a Walmart racket or a performance competitor's racket. Wilson, you need to get your shit together. This is an absolute embarrassment to one of your most popular lines of tennis rackets in the world. And I cannot believe you overlooked the second most important shot in tennis. You should be absolutely ashamed of yourselves. You should fire whoever let this racket into the market because this is not a bad racket except for this huge, huge glaring flaw. That and the launch angle. Unlike your professional tennis players that use or endorse your rackets, weekend warriors and junior competitors actually use this frame. Honestly, this was a fun playtest for me. Yes, it was absolutely disappointing because of the abysmal launch angle, but it was still a fun playtest. To possibly counter this huge negative to a pretty fun racket, I would seriously try either hybriding the strings with a multi-filament on the mains and or trying a 17 gauge or a thinner gauge in the string bed overall. If you're one of the lucky few that have played with the Wilson Blade V8 18x20, did you agree with my thoughts? If you haven't played with it, are you still willing to try it, even though it's nowhere near perfect? Leave a comment down in the section below. If you want my direct feedback from my community, come join my Discord where almost a thousand active tennis players and stringers regularly discuss equipment, pro tennis results, and memes. I will leave a link to that Discord down in the section below. And don't worry, guys, the 16x19 version of this racket, that review is coming very soon. This playtest was with my Selenko Hyper-G 16 gauge shrunk the lower recommended tension of 52 pounds and this racket was a 4 and 3 eighths grip size. And as always, happy hitting. Last one. Oh, no, no, no.